Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and DJ and TV Insider. Everyone. Welcome to another episode of Summer Shorts here on DJ NTV. I am DJ Rachel and we're going to be talking about the waveform in Virtual DJ 8. Now the waveform in any software is one of the most visual parts of the program. And I know we are all very familiar with the waveform, but do you really understand what it's telling you about your music? Today I'm going to discuss not only how to understand your waveform, but also show you how to change the look and the layout of that waveform in Virtual DJ 8 so that you can become a better mixer based upon what that waveform is showing you. Now let me start off by saying that I am a firm believer in mastering the fundamentals of mixing by ear and trusting your instincts. However, for those who are just getting started with learning how to mix, having these visual cues can really help you learn the structure of music and how to make more intelligent decisions when mixing two tracks together. Also, waveforms have helped me be a better mixer in challenging environments, particularly where I've had either an echo or a delay in sound and no monitor to use, or let's just say you forget your headphones altogether. Having this visual backup can be very helpful in making sure that you have those perfect blends and that your two tracks are locked in. Now, I'm a very visual learner, so let's just jump right on in to the software. Okay, welcome to my virtual DJ8 screen. Now you're gonna notice that I am working with the default skin and only using two deck mode. Now virtual DJ does have the option for multiple decks. However, we're gonna save that for another time. You can find these waveforms in three places in virtual DJ. Right up here at the top, this is called the rhythm window and you're gonna notice that there's waveforms up here. We also have a waveform located in deck A as well as deck B. Additionally, if I click on this scratch box right here in the play area, you're going to notice two different waveforms also show up. So first let's start with the rhythm window at the top. Now if I'm playing a track, you're going to notice that if I move this adjustment slider on the side here, right on the left, that my waveform is going to either speed up or slow down and change its spacing based upon how much I am moving this adjustment. Now your audience does not hear what's going on with this waveform. This is just a visual cue for the DJ to figure out where it is best for their pacing to lock in the other track. So there is no right or wrong here, it's really whatever you feel feel comfortable with. I then want to move to this waveform drop down menu right here. You're going to notice that I do have a couple of options. Now the default wave is currently selected and this is the most traditional look in Virtual DJ. We can also add extra grid lines by clicking right down here on the bottom where it says show extra grid lines. And what these do is extend these beat markers all the way up to the top and bottom so that you can have a better look at when your two tracks are locked in. In. Now, I personally find this a little cluttered and I don't use them, but some of you may find it a useful tool to help you lock in those tracks a little better. The next option is going to be the default mirrored wave. This is personally my favorite style of the waveform. You can see that it clearly overlaps all of these tracks and it also puts these boxes stacked on top of one another so I feel that it's much easier to make sure that they are properly locked in or if they need a little adjustment. So this is my personal style of waveform in Virtual DJ. The last one is going to be the horizontal scratch wave. And I think this is really awesome because this mimics what you would see in Serato DJ. Now I know a lot of my Serato users um, complain about the waveforms in Virtual DJ and that's one of the reasons why they're not really fond of the program. So I think it's really awesome that Virtual DJ has added this option so that 
Anyone who feels comfortable with this style can use it and feel right at home as if they were using their other preferred software. So now I want to talk about the waveforms that are located in deck A and deck B. As you can see, we have blue on the left and red on the right. This is a very traditional look of Virtual DJ and it's really part of the classic skin. Now, I do want to point out that we can change the look of these waveforms in the settings and I want to show you what they look like, how to do it, and how these changes can make you a better mixer. So let's start by clicking on the settings right up here in the right hand corner. And then I'm going to click on options and then in my search bar right here, I'm going to start typing in color for the colored waveforms. And you're going to notice right down here under skins where it says colored waveforms that I have a few options. Now, right now I have the monochrome selected. So this is the traditional look of virtual DJ where again, I have blue on the left and red on the right. So now let's take a look at the next one over, which is neutral. To my understanding, I believe that this mimics the look of Serato DJ. So if this is what you prefer, this option is here. I really want to focus on the ultra blue, the infrared and the per deck feature. So if I click on ultra blue, you're going to notice that both deck A and deck B have been changed to a blue green look. And if I click on the infrared, it now changes it to a red and blue look. And if I click on the per deck option, I really enjoy this one the most because it's still keeping the blue on the left and the red on the right, but I still have these other color indicators and I'm going to go over on how those can be helpful in just a second. So again, you're going to pick what works best for you. My favorite option is the per deck feature. Now let's explain how these colors can help you mix better. Typically, the darker the color, the more bass and drum hits there are going to be. So as I'm looking at these tracks, I can tell where my bass drops are going to be and where there's going to be the most kind of bass line and uh, aggressive part of the track. You'll also notice that I have some plain green sections. Now these are going to tell me that this is a lot where my vocal and mid range sounds are going to be. So not as much of those bass and drum hits. Even over here in deck B in the red, you're going to notice that I have more of a light red and purple look again, which is telling me there's going to be more um, vocals and higher tones versus these big red blocks that are going to tell me that that's where my bass drops are going to be. So we can hear kind of how this sounds. Now, when I'm looking at this waveform, you're going to notice that I have some blue. So mostly what we're hearing right now is drum beat and tempo. Now, if I skip over to my next point, you're going to notice that there's significantly more green and less blue. And this is how I know that there's going to be more vocal. As I approach this dark blue section, I'm now anticipating the beat drop coming up as indicated by the dark blue color. Now the next section that I see is going to be another light green section. This tells me that the majority of it is going to be vocals. And I feel that this would be a really good place for me to mix my track. So I'm going to start mixing in the other deck once I meet my hot cue. So as you see, I use the indicators and the marks in the waveform to help me make a decision on where I wanted to mix in and out of the track. Now I want to walk you through why I made that decision based upon what I see. So again, if I go back to this green section here, this tells me that there's going to be more vocals. 
then this section right here, you're going to notice that I do have some blue lines mixed within the screen. So this tells me, yes, there are some vocals, but the beat and the bass line is starting to come back into the track. And then obviously when I get to this dark blue section, that's where the drop is. Now I notice that this part of the waveform also has kind of a tapered look. This is showing me that there's going to be some type of buildup in the track. And I notice right before this bass drop that there's a really uh, defined green section here that tells me that it's going to start um, a good point for me to start fading this out and bringing in the other track. So again, based upon what I see in the waveform, it's helping me make a more intelligent decision on where would be a good place to mix this track. So hopefully this was a good example for you to see on how helpful waveforms can be and make you a better mixer just by the visual cues given to you through the waveform. So again, thank you so much for joining us here on the Summer Shorts series on DJN TV. I'm DJ Rachel. Thank you for watching.